Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm bringing you another competitive analysis video. This video will cover all the top returning Pokemon that will be joining VGC 2020 through the Isle of Armor DLC. Of course, the rule set for VGC 2020 updated uh, for Series 5. Series 5 starts on July 1st, so uh, it's only a couple of days away, and that series will incorporate all of the Pokemon through the DLC. So I wanted to make a video covering some of the top returning Pokemon, some sets that you might see them uh, played with, uh, how you should expect them to be trained, and also offer you a sample set, so if you're interested in trying out any of these Pokemon, you can kind of just plug and chug. I will caveat this with the fact that, of course, I won't be able to cover every Pokemon, and this is all just my personal opinions. These spreads and uh, the sets are also just kind of like an example. Uh, of course, you don't have to follow what I've done in this video, but just it's just to give you a general idea of how they might be played and, uh, you know, give you a starting point if you're interested in trying out these Pokemon. So, I hope you find this video helpful. I spent a lot of time on it, and I'd love any feedback as always, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, first of all, I want to point out that we will be covering 15 different Pokemon in this video, uh, and if you're not interested in all the Pokemon, that's totally okay. I've timestamped everything in the description below, so feel free to just skip to the section and the Pokemon that you are specifically interested in. Uh, and once again, each section will cover basically what this Pokemon does, some you know good moves and items that you often see on this Pokemon, how it might be trained, uh, and then I'll give you a sample set if you want to use it yourself. So let's just dive right into things. The first Pokemon we'll be talking about is Alakazam. Now Alakazam is really interesting, I honestly didn't think it would be super viable at all, but uh, actually a lot of players have been spamming it on Pokemon Showdown. So at least in the early metagame, you might expect to see this Pokemon, whether it's actually going to be good or not is still kind of, you know, we'll have to see. But uh, the main reason that players are using Alakazam is because of Expanding Force, which is one of the new tutor moves. Uh, it just does an incredible amount of damage when you have Psychic Terrain up, so naturally players are partnering Alakazam with NDD, and Alakazam is able to outspeed the majority of the metagame, so that is exactly why it's being used. Uh, so I think in the early meta, you should at least expect to see that duo. Will it be good? We'll have to see. But will you see it? I think definitely. I also would think uh, re recommend for you guys to not underestimate the strength of uh, this duo, mainly because Psychic Spam can just win games so, so quickly, especially because Alakazam might choose to run something like a Life Orb or a Choice Bex, and Diddy can run something like Helping Hand. So when you compound all these boosts together, it just does a lot of damage. In terms of moves, Alakazam has a pretty straightforward move setup, but it gets, you know, fairy coverage through Dazzling Gleam, Grass and Fighting coverage through Energy Ball and Focus Blast as well. And you could even get a little bit cheeky and run something like Nasty Plot, which, you know, pairs well with uh, NDD or Togekiss, which are Follow Me users. In terms of items, I think you should always expect standard stuff like Life Orb, uh, Specs or Scarf, or maybe a Focus Sash. Focus Sash works uh, exceptionally well uh, when you're partnering up with Nasty Plot. So this is just a sample set. I think most Alakazams you're going to see are going to be max speed, max special attack. Um, the item is a little flexible, but you're definitely going to see Expanding Force and I think Dazzling Gleam. And uh, the last move set could be like Psychic, Focus Blast, and you're definitely going to want Protect. So Alakazam. Sam, expect to see it early meta. Next Pokemon we'll be talking about is Amoongus. Amoongus is, I think, one of the Pokemon that a lot of people were talking about when we saw it revealed in a trailer, and for good reason. This is historically one of the best Pokemon in VGC history, and for so many different reasons, right? Uh, Spore in itself is an incredible attack. It's very consistent as well, but Amoongus also gets Rage Powder for the redirection. Uh, with Regenerator, you're able to switch out and back in more easily, and of course, it just has good typing and can switch into a lot of attacks, and so uh, Amoongus is just kind of one of the ultimate defensive Pokemon. In my opinion, I think it might be slightly weaker now because of Dynamax and Max moves, and that's for multiple reasons. There are a lot of Pokemon that can just Max and potentially pick up a one-hit KO on Slomungus if it doesn't have like a Type Resist Berry or a Focus Sash. And Max moves, of course, can also set up terrain, meaning that Amoongus' Spore is a little bit less effective. Amoongus is also a Pokemon that I think will very rarely Dynamax, something similar to like Whimsicott or Dusclops. So for that reason, you know, it's maybe a little bit less flexible. That being said, I still think it's going to be really good. It naturally works really well into Trick Room teams because of its really slow base speed, it also pairs really nicely with setup Pokemon, something like Dragon Dance Dragapult, Swords Dan Excadrill, just to give you some examples. But the thing about Amoongus is it's super flexible and can really be thrown onto any team. At the end of the day, Sleep is one of the best ways to deal with Dynamax, and Amoongus is a Pokemon that's just really bulky and often able to get a Spore off. So it's a Pokemon that you're definitely going to have to still watch out for. Out of all the attacks, most of these attacks we've already seen before, but uh, I think Pollen Puff is something that is super interesting as an option onto it because you can heal your own teammate now with it as well. So uh, just 
adds more to Amoongus's toolbox. In terms of items, I personally would expect to see and use uh, Focus Sash and, or in one of the two type resist berries just so that it guarantees Amoongus gets a spore off. I think it's going to be pretty difficult to get a one hit KO into Amoongus unless you're maxing. If you can trade a max uh, and a berry slash Focus Sash to, uh, in, and then get sleep off, I think that can be super, super worth it. But you can also see recovery items, Black Sludge, Citrus Berry, one of the few on berries could definitely all work. And then Mentor and Rocky Helmet are items that were used on it previously. So some players might opt for them. Of course, depends on the team. So uh, moveset is really standard. I mean, Spore and Rage Powder are pretty much givens. And then uh, I think Protect and Giga Drain is kind of the standard, but you could definitely opt for Pollen Puff over it. Uh, this is a Koba Berry spread. So the spread allows you to uh, uh, take a... Uh, Togekiss, Max Airstream, or Life Orb Dragapult Max Airstream. Uh, of course, the benchmarks for attacks might change as the metagame develops, but going into before we really have any knowledge, I figured, you know, those are at least two decent benchmarks to try to EV for. So, yeah, um, Focus Sash, I think, could definitely work as well, just to guarantee you, like, you can take a max move, uh, essentially. But Amoongus has been really good in VGC, and I think it still will be good. Maybe not as good as previously, but still something you're gonna have to prepare for, because sleep as a condition just is so good in this format. Next Pokemon we'll be talking about is Azumarill. Azumarill is really interesting. It's a Pokemon that picked up usage in late 2015 after the World Championships because people realized that Belly Drum Azumarill could sw like sweep the majority of the metagame back then. I think Belly Drum Azumarill is a lot less viable nowadays, and for a bunch of reasons. Dynamax is kind of the main reason, though. Uh, it's really hard to just get a Belly Drum up for free, uh, especially you know, if something like Amoongus is returning to the format. Uh, Amoongus can wall those Aqua Jets as well. But in general, Dynamax just makes it really difficult to get a free Belly Drum off and it also makes it more difficult for you to pick up one hit KOs even a plus six aqua jet is not going to be KOing a lot of the Dynamax Pokemon however you know you still have to respect anything like Embelly Drum uh, it kind of is like similar to Snorlax where like Snorlax uh has definitely roles on like hard trick room teams and it can set up a Belly Drum and just sweep through teams but it needs the proper support so possible sets you should expect to see definitely include Belly Drum I can also see just offensive sets with something like Choice Band or Assault Vest working and then super support which I think will be really niche but could potentially work for example a Sap Zipper set with Helping Hand and Perish Song. In terms of the attacks, most of these are attacks that we've seen previously. It does get access to Bounce, so you can go for Max Airstreams and Steel Roller, which is a pretty interesting option. And finally, in terms of items, Citrus Berry is what you're going to expect on Belly Drum sets and Assault Vest, I think, if you're not seeing um, the uh, Citrus Berry and the Belly Drum immediately. But uh, you could run other you know, items such as Life Orb or Choice Band as well. In terms of a sample set, uh, this is an Assault Vest set, which I think uh, actually could work. I, I probably, if I were to try out Azumarill in the format, would stick to an AV set earlier. If you want to go Belly Drum, you have to have a lot of support around it. So the idea of this set is you can outspeed, uh, you know, Tyranitar with no speed investment, and its speed creep is uh, speed, speed creeps it by two, max attack, and then the rest is basically just dumped into HP. So you have pretty good coverage between Player Off, Waterfall, Superpower, and Ice Punch. You're able to hit pretty much everything in the metagame for at least neutral damage. So able to take attacks pretty well and of course dish out a lot of damage in return. The next Pokemon we'll be talking about is Cobalion, which is a really interesting Pokemon. It's a Pokemon that we basically never really saw in previous VGC formats because it was pretty much just outclassed, but I think it definitely has a role in 2020. The reason for that is because it's Steel type, and it is faster than the majority of Steel type Pokemon that you can use, such as Excadrill or Duraludon. Similar to its counterparts in Verizion and Terrakion, of course, you can take advantage of beat up, so expect it to be paired up with Pokemon like Whimsicott or Dragapult just to get some quick boosts. It also has a pretty good move pool. Of course, you have the standard Steel and Fighting type attacks, but you also have Giga Impact, which of course is base 150 as a max move. You have Bounce, which allows you to max Airstream, and then you have like Poison, Bug, Psychic, Rock Coverage. So there are a lot of fair uh, options that work on it. Uh, a lot of items, of course, that can work on a offensive Pokemon on this as well. I think Assault Vest is actually something that I uh, think makes a lot of intuitive sense because it has a pretty good high defense stat. Um, with Assault Vest, you also have a pretty good special defense stat. It just means that you can't max card, so you have to play carefully around that, but it's something that could definitely work. So in terms of a sample spread, you can just go max attack, max speed uh, with the Assault Vest, close combat, iron head, stone edge, bounce. Uh, what's actually interesting, despite the spread being so basic, is that it can take two crit max airstreams from crit kiss. Uh, it can also survive or get a one hit KO onto max Dragapult if you get the beat off combination off uh, with max steel spike if the Dragapult doesn't have any bulk invested. So despite being super simple with 252, 252, it actually is still able to meet some important benchmarks. Next Pokemon we'll be talking about is I think one that a lot of people were interested in and that's Kingdra. 
King Draw started a lot of commotion because people were like, okay, you know, this is returning. It's uh, now in a format where can Dynamax and Politoed's also coming back. So that's one of the reasons why rain teams are getting super common uh, early metagame. Uh, King Draw is a Pokemon that wants to Dynamax a lot of the times. And for that reason, it's just a really, really strong sweeper on rain teams. It also gets access to Hurricane. So you can go for max Airstreams, which means that even if you bring it outside of rain, uh, it could potentially just outspeed things after a single max Airstream. So the idea behind King Draw is really to just pick up Chaos as quick as possible. You want to use moves like Draco Meteor, Hydro Pump, boosted by Life Orb, Max, and potentially helping hand support, and really just, you know, kind of nuke your opponent. In terms of items, I think Life Orb specs are just super, super intuitive items on it, but I definitely expect to see some Kingdras maybe with the type resist berries to take potential super effective attacks from something like Dragapult or Togekiss or even opposing Kingdras. In terms of attacks, I think uh, it's not exactly super flexible, but the attacks it has are really good. It's just whether you want to, you know, opt for like Dragon Pulse over Draco Meteor, what water type attack you want to use, and whether you want like Ice Beam over Hurricane, but I think the moves are pretty standard here. Uh, this spread allows you to outspeed max speed Tyranitar when you're not in rain, uh, and the rest is just dumped into uh, obviously special attack, and then whatever is remaining is in HP. So I think Kingdra is definitely a really interesting Pokemon that should... Uh, I think make a really early impact, especially because so many people are just naturally pairing it up with Politoed. Next Pokemon we'll be talking about is Crocodile. Crocodile, of course, is a world champion winning Pokemon, and it definitely has a fair amount of versatility in this format. Of course, Intimidate is still a pretty solid ability, so Crocodile just adds another Intimidate user to the format. This Pokemon is also faster than a fair amount of the metagame, so you're able to outspeed things like Excadrill, for example, if it's not in Sand, which I think is uh, pretty cool. Uh, Crocodile, of course, while the majority of sets are Intimidate, there are some players that like to use kind of like gimmicky anger point strategies as well, so don't count that out. I don't think that's going to be meta standard by any means, but if you see Crocodile with something that looks like it can maybe land a critical hit onto Crocodile, just be wary of that in team preview. Uh, this Pokemon actually gets really cool attacks. It gets a lot of really interesting options and a ton of different coverage, but I think some of the interesting attacks that it gets, for example, is like Assurance. You can partner with something faster, like and go for an Airstream, and you can just partner and you know duel with that. Lash Out is you know one of the newer tutor moves, which I think is super compelling. Uh, Close Combat, which is just you know obviously one of the strongest fighting type attacks in the game. I also think Crocodile is a Pokemon that can carry a lot of items, even more so than what I listed there. But uh, Weakness Policy is actually something that could be interesting, especially with Aqua Gen and Ice Shard already being used in the format. Uh, Salt Vest also could make a lot of sense, but this Pokemon I think could use like six to seven items and be viable with all of them. In terms of a sample spread, this is just an Assault Vest set with Intimidate that allows you to just cycle Intimidates in uh, easily and out. Uh, it takes advantage of Lash Out, which can be pretty, pretty interesting, especially if your opponent is decreasing your stats through something like a max move, but uh, pretty standard set here and self-explanatory. The next Pokemon is Magnezone. Magnezone is super interesting. It's a Pokemon that I actually was kind of testing in 2016 due to its unique typing. And similarly, I don't think, you know, it's going to be super, super common in this format, but I think it definitely has a pretty unique role due to its typing, right? Steel and Electric allows you to hit a fair amount of the format for super effective damage. Uh, of course, Magnezone having Sturdy is also just a really phenomenal ability, allowing you to take even something like a big Max Quake and retaliate back with an attack. Uh, Magnezone currently is trending on rain team, so uh, you might expect to see this with Pokemon like Politoed, Kingdra, Rillaboom, for example. Uh, its move pool is not very diverse, right? It gets Flash Cannon and a bunch of electric type attacks, but it does get access to Body Press, which gives you some more coverage. Ton of electric type options though, which is cool. You can do a lot of different things with those electric type attacks. And in terms of item, I think, you know, something like Assault Vest is also easy to throw onto this, but you could go for choice items, recovery items, even something like safety goggles for Amoonguses, uh, which can give rain teams a fair amount of trouble. So sample spread here is just one that you desi utilizes an Assault Vest set. Uh, you take advantage of that high base defense, get some good damage off with Body Press. You can Volt Switch in and out as well, uh, and just Flash Cannon and Thunderbolt for stab damage. It's a Pokemon that could potentially Dynamax depending on the matchup, of course. And, uh, yeah, just an interesting option because, you know, a lot of fairy types exist in the format, especially things like Primarine and Togekiss, and Assault Vest Magnezone actually has a pretty decent matchup against those Pokemon. Next Pokemon we're looking at is Alolan Marowak. This is also a world champion winning Pokemon, and it fits really nicely onto Trick Room teams. It's also a huge Dynamax threat, especially with Thick Club, which is pretty much the only item that you want to run on this Pokemon. One of the main reasons that Alolan Marowak I think is super interesting is because it's one of the better users of Poltergeist, one of the strongest tutor moves from the DLC. It's just able to do so much damage, you compound that with Stab, Thick Club, and you're really able to just chain damage so, so quickly. 
Lightning Rod is also a compelling ability. Of course, it allows you to protect your partner Pokemon, Pokemon such as Togekiss, Lapras, and Primarina, uh, and allows you to, yeah, play around them a little bit better. And I think, like, Marowak actually can maybe fit onto teams with those Pokemon because you can run them in both Trick Room and Tailwind. And Marowak, despite being a pretty slow Pokemon, uh, you could, for example, take EVs out of HP and put them in speed. Gets a lot of good, strong attacks. I think Poltergeist is a move that you're going to expect to see a lot of the times, as well as Flora Blitz. But you actually have a fair amount of support moves as well, like will o -Wisp, Parish Song, and Ally Switch. Some players, when they played Marowak back in 2017, would run two attacks and then Parish Song uh, with Protect. So Parish Song basically allows you to pick up a quick knockout or two and then just end the game immediately. Thick Club is pretty much the only item I'd expect to see on this, but maybe some support sets who aren't attacking most of the time can deviate away from that. Uh, in terms of move pool and move set, I think, like I mentioned, Fleur Blitz, Poltergeist are moves that you should really expect to see on it. Most of the time, your third move is really a coverage move and you really want Protect. Uh, you can run, like, max HP, max attack. This is just for Trick Room teams, but if you want to use that on, like, a team with Tailwind, you might opt for, uh, obviously, 31 uh, IV and speed, and then even maybe some speed investment as well, so let you get the jump on a lot of different things. But this is a Pokemon that definitely needs to be respected as a Dynamax Pokemon because it just does so much damage, and it's got really, really great coverage through its types as well. Now we're on to Politoed. Politoed's, I think, one of the Pokemon that caused the most hype when it was announced through the DLC because Rain just was not a very viable strategy up until this point. The main reason for that is because, you know, Pelipper is the only Rain user uh, and or only Pokemon with Drizzle, and it's just not a very good Pokemon in this format with Dynamax. It's, you know, a Pokemon that pretty much never wants to max, but also doesn't really get great defensive moves. So, Politoed's value is that it's a lot bulkier, but also has access to a ton of different great support moves, including Parish Song, Helping Hand, Encore, uh, and Icy Wind, so a lot of different attacks. Uh, it also, of course, has a lot of new partners from the DLC, things like Kingdra, Poliwrath, uh, Urshifu, uh, G-Max Rillaboom, for example, so a lot of things that naturally make Rain, I think, just a little bit stronger. A lot of different items you can use on Politoed. I think, you know, older support sets uh, tended to go for either ber berries that allowed you to resist super effective attacks, uh, recovery items like Citrus Berry or one of the few one berries. Uh, Choice Scarf can also be used to just dish out a lot of damage immediately, but overall, Politoed should be expected to be in a support role most of the time. I could definitely see people running like hyper offensive Politoed, the one rain teams that just want to pick up KOs as quickly as possible. You can definitely catch your opponents off guard as well. Uh, in terms of a sample spread, this is just max HP, max Bidef with Bold, so you're able to kind of mix the bulk between defense and special defense. Uh, that's Bidef investment, it's important, it means you can just take something like a max Lightning from Rotom, which I think is pretty important. Uh, I think most Politoids are going to want to run moves like Scald and Helping Hand uh, with Protect, and then the last move is pretty flexible. You could go for something like the Icy Wind uh, or a Hypnosis even if you want to gamble a little bit. So yeah, Politoid is definitely a Pokemon that you are going to see a ton of in the early format right now due to uh, how many you know players want to try out Rain as a strategy. Next Pokemon is Porygon 2. Porygon 2 is primarily used as a bulky Trick Room user. It's similar to Dusclops, um, but, you know, it's a little bit faster. Uh, it also has a good balance between bulk and offense. For example, Dusclops is typically stay on the field, but the way they distribute damage is through Pain Split and Nightshade. Uh, Porygon 2, on the other hand, gets access to Ice Beam, Tri-Attack, Thunderbolt, so it's actually able to do a fair amount of damage and hit most things for neutral or super effective damage. Uh, Download also takes advantage of the fact that the metagame often, you know, is built so Pokemon are physically defensive, so you're able to get that special attack boost, and that can actually be a really big deal. Porygon 2 was one of the most common Pokemon back in 2017, and for good reason, it's very, very difficult to knock out, similar to Dusclops, and of course, um, you know, a lot of players tend to go for something like Tyranitar or Dragapult, something with a way to hit Dusclops for super effective, but those attacks don't hit Porygon 2 for super effective. Max Knuckle also doesn't do as much as uh, you know, the normal fighting type attacks do, and that's really the only way to hit Porygon for super effective damage. So you might expect to see this as a alternative to other Trick Room users in the format. Uh, also, is just able to, once again, dish out a fair amount of damage, pretty much exclusively used with Eviolite. Here is a sample set. Um, this has a bunch of bulk distributed in both in defense and special defense. I believe that special attack investment means after a download boost, you can uh, two-hit KO regular Togekiss 100% uh, of the time. And it is just a standard set. You might see Thunderbolt over Tri-Attack, but typically you're going to see Trick Room recover for sure, and then the attacks are pretty flexible. Next Pokemon is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, but unfortunately a Pokemon that I don't think is going to be very good in the metagame, and that's Scizor. Uh, and there are a bunch of reasons why I don't think Scizor will be as good anymore. I mean, of course, Pokemon like Incineroar and Arcanine already exist, and not those not only intimidate Scizor, but also completely wall and can one-hit KO it, but Scizor's value in previous formats was, for example, going for a Sword Stance and then getting a really big bullet punch off. 
However, now with Dynamax being in the format, it's a lot harder to really get value. It's harder to get a Sword Stance off in the first place, but it's also harder to say guarantee a KO. Uh, when I used Scizor back in 2012, for example, I would pair it with the Steel Gem after a Sword Stance. I could pick up a one-hit KO on a lot of the common Pokemon in the format. Nowadays, though, players are often just going to be Dynamaxing, and there are a lot of Fire-type attacks and Pokemon in the format as well. That being said, I can still see some niche uses for it. Of course, Technician is just a really good ability. Priority Bullet Pump still does a fair amount of damage, especially to something like Togekiss. You can still pair it up with something like Sword Stance or Choice Band. Uh, Scizor is also interesting as a Dynamax option, perhaps on rain teams that cover that fire type weakness, because with Life Orb, you can dish out even more damage. You can also boost your speed stat through Max Airstream because of course Scizor does get access to a bunch of flying type attacks. So, a bunch of compelling options there. Uh, overall though, I think Scizor are definitely going to be weaker than previous formats, but some items you might expect to see are those offensive items, or something like Assault Vest or Safety Goggles. If I were to try out Scizor in this format, I'd probably use something similar to this with Dual Wing Beat, Bullet Punch, U-Turn Protect. The idea behind this is just to get really powerful, uh, you know, technician attacks off. Dual Wing Beat can actually do a ton of damage to things like Amoongus, for example. Uh, it's a Pokemon that I don't think I would commit to Dynamaxing a lot of the time, um, because yeah, then you, you like the trade-off between the Max Moves and Technician gets a little bit weird. But uh, I think Scizor is still a Pokemon that could function well. I would love to see someone make a Sword Stance set work in this format. I just think it's a lot harder than previous years because of the prevalence of Fire Types, Intimidates, and of course Dynamax. Next Pokemon is a all-time favorite from 2014, Talonflame. Of course, we all know that Talonflame has been nerfed a fair amount uh, via Gale Wings. You know, now Gale Wings, you have to be at full HP uh, to have that priority. But I think Talonflame still has a fair amount of potential. It just has a really, really good speed stat that allows it to outspeed the majority of the metagame. So it's one of the fastest Tailwind users that you can really use. Uh, interestingly enough, I actually think it can be used as a counter to Whimsicott as well. Uh, Whimsicott, which I think will be a early metagame Pokemon, you know, you can KO with the Life Orb Dual Wing Beat. Uh, of course, some Whimsicots can get around that if they decide to invest, for example, in max uh, their HP stat, because Talonflame's attack at the end of the day is not very high, but I think that's a compelling option. Even if not, though, it at least guarantees you a Tailwind before Whimsicott attacks. Most Talonflames in VGC were previously run just with, you know, Tailwind or Choice Band slash Life Orb. Uh, however, you can even opt for bulky support sets, and a bunch of players have used bulky support throughout the years, where you have things like Will-O-Wisp, Taunt, Roost even, and you're able to just disrupt your opponent. I think Burns can be more important in this format now, especially because so many of the attackers are more physically oriented. So there is some value to attacks like Will-O-Wisp, for example, as well as Roost and Taunt. Uh, but like I said, I think you should expect to see like Life Orb or Choice Band, maybe a Lumberry, and recovery by, uh, berries if it is the bulky support talent flame but uh this thing is definitely not going to be nearly as oppressive as it was in 2014 i still think it is an interesting option though especially in the early meta where players are gravitating towards tailwind so sample spread here pretty basic just max speed max attack you kind of want the max speed so that uh, against other talent flames you kind of have the 50 50 at worst uh in terms of attacking first and if they're not uh, invested in max then you can just get a big prey bird off before they even move but uh like i said you could also offer the dual wing beat over one of those attacks so that you can pick up a ko onto whimsicott definitely has its options the next pokemon is one i think that is very hyped up currently i think we are all curious if Terrakion will end up living up to its hype, but it will undoubtedly be used a lot in the early metagame. Justified is just an incredible ability, but Terrakion also gets access to Rock Slide and its Stab. It's one of the best attacks in the game. Close combat, it's able to do so much damage, and the combination of fighting and rock makes it really, really difficult to deal with Terrakion, especially because the one follow me user, a Rage Powder user, would be uh, Amoongus, but Amoongus, like, Whimsicott can ignore, so you can just go for beat up onto it and then max rock fall. So uh, it's a Pokemon that can be super oppressive and, uh, you know, forces you to kind of play uh, in a reactionary play style right from the beginning. So you absolutely should expect this to be paired with Whimsicott uh, because that gets access to both Beat Up and Tailwind, but I could definitely see this being with other Tailwind users as well, like the aforementioned Talonflame. You might also see it with other Beat Up users like Dragapult, for example, which we mentioned earlier. The uh, Terrakion, of course, almost always wants a Rock and Fighting type attack as well as Protect, but then the fourth move you have a lot of coverage for, for example, you've got uh, Speed Control with Bulldoze, you've got Stompy Tantrum and EQ, uh, and then a bunch of different uh, coverage through x or Poison Jab, Zen Headbutt, and Iron Head, respectively. A lot of items that can be run on this Pokemon as well. In previous formats, players opted for something like Focus Sash Terrakion or Choice Scarf uh, or Life Orb. I think Focus Sash will be less common because a lot of the strategies will revolve around using Beat Up on it, but uh, Choice Scarf is an interesting option. Uh, Life Orb obviously does so much damage. Assault Vest could even work on it. Choice Band could work on it. Definitely a lot, fair amount of items uh, that are viable. A Lumberry potentially as well to stop Burns or Paralysis or Sleeps. 
That being said, at the end of the day, you absolutely have to respect Terrakion, as I was talking about in yesterday's video. I'm not sure it will be, you know, super broken or anything, right? Like, Terrakion with Whimsicott was in other VGC formats after 2011 and really wasn't used very much at all, but I think Dynamax just makes this such a potent threat, and the fact that Terrakion outspeeds the majority of the metagame means you have to respect it. So, sample spread here, super basic. Like I said, close combat rocks like protect are pretty much givens, and then like uh, the item and the fourth move is pretty flexible. I have quick guard here just so you can stop fake out uh, from, you know, something like Incineroar, just guarantee a uh, tailwind going up, or something like Rillaboom, for example. But uh, I suspect that it probably won't be like the best attack. It's just one that I know I used previously and uh, had some value with. So yeah, at the end of the day, this is a pretty straightforward Pokemon, but it is definitely going to be strong. Moving on away from Terrakion, though, we are going into Virizion. Now, Virizion is really interesting, right? Because similar to Terrakion and Kabali, you can take advantage of beat up. But Virizion's weakness is that it is four times weak to flying. So I think that severely limits its potential, especially because it's a Pokemon that I foresee players wanting to Dynamax the majority of the time. Uh, being four times weak to physical max airstream, I think it's just super bad when you have things like Dragapult and Cinderace that are just pressuring with max airstream immediately with Life Orb can just maybe pick up a one-hit KO, but I thought it was still worth mentioning because of course it's another Pokemon that can just uh, capitalize off beat up and sweep through you immediately. That's why like beat up Arcanine and beat up Lucario strats were really common in the early metagame. Few players are prepared for it, and I think while everyone's preparing for Terrakion, Virizion might be one let people sleep on a little bit. So you still get ready for it. Uh, gets actually access to the same coverage moves as, you know, Terrakion and Cabalion, but Grassy Glide is a really interesting option on it, which it gets access to, as well as Bounce for Max Airstream. So, similar to Terrakion and the Cabalion in terms of the items that you might want to see on it, and of course this will be partnered most of the time with Tailwind or Beat Up stuff. Sample spread here, once again, basic max speed, max attack, with Leaf Blade, Close Combat, and Bounce as the last attack just so you can potentially control the speed. Max Airstream is just so good in VGC 2020. Moving on to Volcarona now. Volcarona is interesting. It's a Pokemon that was very dominant in previous years of VGC, was kind of used a little bit in more recent formats, say in 2018, uh, even in 2019. But I think it definitely is limited at the end of the day by its multiple type weaknesses. That being said, it still has a really, really good speed stat and it's able to do a lot of damage. So there are a bunch of ways you can run Volcarona, right? You might opt for a super offensive set with like Overheat, um, Heat Wave, Bug Buzz Protect, their setup sets. Quiver Dance is an incredible setup attack if you're able to get it off. It's just really hard to when everyone's using Max Air Streams and Rock Slides. But if you can support the Volcarona properly, get a Quiver Dance off and then Max Flare, uh, it just does so much damage. Uh, defensive Volcaronas were used previously as well, kind of like Talonflame, where it's like most of the time people don't use it defensively, although I'd say defensive Volcarona was maybe a little bit more common than defensive Talonflame, but, uh, you know, it gets access to Will-O-Wisp and Rage Powder. Those are both excellent support attacks, so uh, if you're going up against teams that don't have ways to hit Volcarona for super effective damage, a defensive set could be super, super good. So, because of the different ways to run it, definitely a lot of different items that are also viable on it. You can run it super offensively with like that Life Orb or Lumberry if you're going for a Quiver Dance set, or Recovery items if you're going for a more setup-oriented or defense-oriented set. And this spread, also very basic. I think Volgrown is a Pokemon that if you actually really want to explore, you could definitely make some more intricate uh, spreads for, but this is just a super basic one with max special attack, max speed. Lumberry just to cover for Sludge Bomb, or sorry, Sleep Powders and Thunder Waves. So uh, I, this is a classic Quiver Dance set, but like I said, I think a Life Orb could be viable. Assault Vest could be interesting. Um, and you know the Bulky Berries could also be interesting just so that you can spread Will-O-Wisps and Rage Powders around. So... That is going to be it for this video, guys. I wanted to keep it short and succinct. I wanted it to offer some insight into like the top 15, 16 Pokemon that you might expect to see after the DLC. It didn't want to take too much of your time, but my plan going into the next couple of weeks is to definitely release individual guides of all the Pokemon that I covered as well, or as at least a couple of them. So if you're interested in seeing the individual guides, the goal is to go more in depth into these, offer you more spreads, more builds, counters, partners, teammates, all that good stuff. So if that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments below. But I hope you found this video helpful. I had a lot of fun making it and at the end of the day I want you guys to remember this was just you know me with my personal opinions and insights I might have missed some Pokemon that ends up being super meta standard because I just wasn't expecting it to be meta some of these Pokemon might not be used at all but I kind of just based uh, my analysis here off my previous years of VGC what I saw working and what I saw players tending to at least in the early format at the end of the day this breakdown isn't uh, per se like you know every Pokemon in this is going to be really good or everything's going to be super overused it's more you should at least expect to see these in the 
the next couple of weeks. So here is a set that you can try, and here are some ways that you should uh, expect them to be played so you can start preparing yourself mentally for when you're team building. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please share your support by leaving a like. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, take care. I'll see you soon. All right, peace.